So today we're going to explore uh, recording horns. So I'm going to be switching different horns and showing how horns affect the sound of recording. I'm using a six and a half thousandths of an inch glass diaphragm in uh, our own modern uh, studio recorder called Number One uh, with a Mel Epstein recording stylus. It has, uh, it goes glass. Burnt rubber, neoprene, burnt rubber, and then the recorder body. So that is the setup of this. This horn, uh, I have all these, I wrote, this, the horns that we wrote today, I wrote the size of the horn, and this time we are using a 30 by 8 inch horn with a short rubber horn connector. Now i got to set the advanced ball here. Oh, well, it doesn't like to work unless it's down. <laughs> so this is a recording made with the 30 by 8 inch Hawthorne and Shabble horn. 30 by 8 inch. She sells seashells by the seashore. Test of this horn. Sister Susie, where sure along last winter. So that's a test of this horn. This machine does not like to stop. <laughs> so uh, I gotta rest something in the belt here so that it doesn't. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> it just likes to go. Nothing wrong with that. So we're gonna replace this with our 38, 30 by 8 inch horn. I'm going to use the same horn connector. Horn connectors also change sound as well. So our next one is a 29 by 4 and a half inch horn. Made of red poster board. The next horn is a 29 by 4.5 inch red poster board horn. She sells seashells by the seashore. Went well, along last winter about corn shucking time. You're a grand old flag, sung by Billy Murray, Edison Record. We just got to put something in there. There we go. <laughs> It just likes to do that. It likes to go, go, go. I got to adjust the governor a little bit because I have it set for the concert pulley. I have a regular pulley and a concert pulley. But the problem with the concert pulley and the regular pulley that's on the bottom here is that it can only go up to about 140 RPM and it won't get up to 160. So I have to use a smaller portal pulley to get up to 160. And this is the Edison Concert Top Works. So here's the pulley for make recording concert records, or if you're recording brown wax. That's a whole different story. Our next test is a 25 by 6 inch tin horn. Again, this is a 25 by 6 inch tin recording horn. So I'm using the 25 by 6 inch tin horn. Now I want to show you, some people are talking about the echo. When you got the advanced ball down a little bit, you'll get a little echo. Now I'll adjust it up just a bit. Hello! See, we're still getting echo. Hello! Say now, we're not getting echo. 
Well, we got a little bit, but that's because it was too loud. So, uh, this is a, a cut that's a little shallower. Now, let's see how shallow of a cut we can get by adjusting it shallow. Let's hopefully it recorded that sound, so. Now, this is a much shallower groove. When they would have been doing this in the days of the wax cylinder, they would have had a nice microscope on the phonograph to see the stylus with a light to get it the right. So this is a shallower cut. And we'll see how all this comes together when we play it back on the playback phonograph. Yeah, this machine does not like to shut off. So... There we go. So we showed you different horns. We're going to play all these back. Some of them have bands, some of them do not. So we'll probably get a little echo at first, but this will show you the different groove depths. See, this is, all, this is probably too shallow. This is right. These are a little deep with echo, like a Columbia. When you listen to a Columbia molded record, very carefully, a lot of them will go, Columbia Record, you know, on them. So, because uh, uh, they were recorded, they wanted them extra loud, as they said. So they echoed a little bit. The Edisons are recorded a little shallower and are brighter sounding. Not quite as loud, but clearer. So, now we're going to play back what we have just recorded. And this is with a six and a half thousand diaphragm. Yeah. 